Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to our, our prayer line service. Amen. Uh, we just uh, finished some of John a little bit, John 12, on the YouTube channel. So now we're doing uh, this, our prayer line service. Um, bear with me just a moment, guys. Today, um, just letting you guys know, today we're going to be uh, reading scriptures together. I'm going to read some scriptures to you guys' ear gates. And our foundational scripture is going to be uh, Psalms 94. So if you are taking notes, you can write that down. I want to uh, get into the announcements a little bit. I may be on here maybe about 15, 20 minutes today. Amen. And we'll be back on tomorrow as well. But um, just some announcements really quick, guys. If you want to email me. You can email me lovecure243 at yahoo.com. You can email me uh, for daily devotionals. You get that Monday through Sunday. Um, it's free to your email. Uh, you can email me for movie night. That's free. You can email me if you want to share a praise report, request prayer. I'm always praying for you guys. You can email me if you want to uh, request a free Bible plus resources that shipping included. I send that out for free. Uh, if you want to request non perishable items, uh, things like maybe non-perishable groceries or hygiene products that you or your family, your household may need. I'll send that and ship it to you for free. Uh, if you want to sign up for the Girls Talk, uh, you can check out some of my other videos on the YouTube channel about that under my uh, boutique um, playlist. You guys can do that. Um, we have the prayer line. Of course, this is our prayer line. <laughs> We've been doing this for about almost two months or so. Uh, we do it Thursdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a 9 p.m. service once a week. That's announced. Uh, one six four one seven one five zero eight five seven. You can call in. The code is two five two eight five one, or you can just download the free FCC HD app, and um, you're able to call those that want to sow a seed. Uh, thank you. God bless you. You can sow a seed. Always pray for me. Um, words of encouragement. I appreciate. But those that um, understand, like sowing a physical seed and the principle behind that, you can cash out me dollar sign Rakira Ramsey. I appreciate it. God bless all your seeds. And uh, PayPal is um, lovecure243 at yahoo.com. I have a website, washboutiquelk3.com. You guys can check that out. Go to my channel, uh, learn a little bit more about me if you want. Amen. But um, this is our 21st prayer call. So this is the 20, this is like the 21st time that we've come on and been doing these calls. Amen. So I just thank God and I'm grateful. And I said he blessed this call and uh, blessed what we're doing in Jesus' name. I'm not sure who's all going to come on, but if you guys are catching this on a YouTube channel, you have any prayer requests, praise reports, anything that I mention, you can email me or leave it in the comments. And I just ask that the Lord uh, bless us, bless us in our day, bless us, keep us healthy, keep us strong, keep us blessed, keep us fit, keep us focused, keep us fit uh, spiritually and naturally. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. In the name of Jesus and keep us on track and bless us with his good blessings and favor. And we give God all the glory, honor, and praise. No backlash or retaliation against us and the blood of Jesus is over us. Amen in Jesus' name. So if you guys have your Bibles, our foundational scripture this morning is going to be Psalms 94. If you guys are familiar with um, the, um, the prayer line, you guys know that we always give a, a um, foundational scripture. So, uh, God bless. Good morning to whoever just joined. Uh, we're going to read our Psalms 94 this morning. That's our foundational scripture. And then uh, I'll take your prayer requests. And then I'll get into the other nuggets that the Lord showed me. Amen. But good morning and thank you for calling whoever um, called. And God bless you. So, our Psalms 94 is... Amen. So, our Psalms 94 is... I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, this is our scripture for the day. It says, O Lord, the God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, let your glorious justice shine forth. Arise, O judge of the earth, give the proud what they deserve. How long, O Lord, how long will the wicked be allowed to gloat? How long will they speak with arrogance? How long will these evil people boast? They crush your people, Lord, hurting those you claim as your own. They kill widows and foreigners and mortal murder orphans the lord isn't looking they say and besides the god of israel doesn't care think again you fools when will you finally catch on is he deaf the one who made your ears is he blind the one who formed your eyes 
he punishes the nations won't he also punish you come on this word is for someone god is dealing with your enemies god is dealing with the people that just feel like they can just do what they want to do in your life and god not be god in your life or stand up for you amen so it says um so 10 good morning god bless who just came on we're reading psalms 94 and then i'm going to take you guys prayer requests amen so I'm going to start from eight. Think again, you fools. When will you finally catch on? Is he deaf, the one who made your ears? Is he blind, the one who formed your eyes? He punishes the nations. Won't he also punish you? He knows everything. Doesn't he also know what you are doing? The Lord knows people's thoughts. The, he knows they are worthless. 12 reading down. Joyful are those you discipline, Lord, those you teach with your instructions. You give them relief from troubled times until a pit is dug to capture the wicked. The Lord will not reject his people. That word is for someone. You have to know that the Lord is not going to reject you. The Lord is not going to leave you uh, in this situation. The Lord is not going to allow the wicked to gloat over you. The Lord is going to shift things around, bring divine justice, work the situation out for your good. In Jesus' name, amen. So 14 of uh, Psalms 94 says, The Lord will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special possession. Come on, you are special and cherished before God. You are God's special possession. He's not going to reject you. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to forsake you. He's not just going to leave you in a situation like this. Like, you did not just come this far just to come this far. God has more in store for you. Amen. So 15, judgment will again be founded on justice. Glory to God. And those with virtuous hearts will pursue it. So 16 to 23 says, who will protect me from the wicked? Who will stand up for me against evildoers? Come on, somebody needs to decree and declare that God is fighting for you. God's got this. God's got you. Amen. He made a way before he'll do it again. Amen. So uh, 16 says, who will protect me from the wicked? Who will stand up for me against evildoers? 17, unless the Lord had helped me, I would soon have settled in the silence of the grave. 18, I cried out, I am slipping, but your unfailing love, O Lord, supported me. Come on, this situation, this circumstance, that person is not going to take you out. They're not going to take you out. God is going to support you. God is going to uh, make sure that you're on the right path, on the right page. Amen. So 19, when doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. 20. Can unjust leaders claim that God is on their side? Leaders whose decrees permit injustice. They gang up against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. 22. But the Lord is my fortress. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. And that needs to be someone's uh, decree and declare today that Psalms 94, uh, that was Psalms 94, 22. But the Lord is my fortress. It's personal, right? It's for you. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. And 23 says, God will turn the sins of evil people back on them. He will destroy them for their sins. The Lord our God will destroy them. Amen. So that word is for somebody. I pray it was a blessing. Uh, before we get into the other scriptures that the Lord gave me today about us carrying our cross, I want to take um, the person with the 903 area code. You called in first, the last four digits, 6247. And, okay. <laughs> And God bless whoever just came on. Uh, I'm going to take your prayer requests as well. Uh, there were two people that called before, but I'm going to take you all your um, prayer requests. The person that just called, we just read Psalms 94. Amen. But the person that I just announced their last digits, uh, what's your prayer request this morning? The first person that called. I am actually, um, can you hear me? Hi, this is Sister Melissa. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you this morning? <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> How you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. But I said I was going to call in this morning because I, I I need to pray for Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to lift this up in right. Jesus' name. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just saying it's just it's too much. It's too much. I'm just trying to 
too much for me. I don't know what's going on with him, but for me, it's just, I'm like, mm mm. Sometimes I can't even concentrate, and I'm like, why is he popping up on my mind so much? And in my dreams, like, back to back. Okay, well, we're going to begin to pray for you, Sister Melissa. Um, you guys that are catching on the replay and um, those on the line, uh, let's lift up Sister Melissa. Amen in her prayer request. Amen in Jesus' name. Touch and agree with her. Well, Heavenly Father, we bless you. Right now, we just ask that you uh, touch Sister Melissa and bless her from the top of her head to the crown of her feet. God, open everything that needs to be opened in her and in her life and shut and remove everything that needs to be shut and removed in her life. Father God, this man, Father God, she's she's um, having in her spirit, God, she's having this feeling, Father God, that uh, this is not the, you know, what it needs to be, Father God. So this man, Father God, with the drama, different things, we just ask that you take your spiritual scissors, God, and clip and cut what needs to be cut from this man. Or we just rebuke and bind up all spirits of witchcraft. We just re rebuke and uh, bind up all spirits of ungodly soul ties. Father God, we decree and declare that she will not settle for Ishmael when Isaac is the promise. Father God, and Isaac is around the corner. And we just thank you, Father God, for uh, just a smooth transition from this, giving uh, peace, Father God, and giving her strategies and downloads of how she needs to handle this situation. But we just lift it up to you right now. We believe it's done. And we just thank you for uh, godly soul ties and for connecting her for who she needs to be with. We thank you that all witchcraft and curses and evil uh, tied and connected with her between her and this man is broken. And Father God, that she is free and walking in freedom and um, empowerment to, to walk into the land that you have for her. In Jesus' name, God, and we come against backlash and retaliation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I plead the blood of Jesus over you, uh, Miss Melissa. I plead the blood of Jesus over you both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And that Psalms 91 is your portion. And the, You're welcome. God bless you. And the next person that called, um, you were the second person that called, not the person that just called in, uh, the, the, uh, the second person that called. Let me try to read. Um, I'm trying to see. The second person that called in after Miss Melissa, not the person that just called in a couple minutes ago, the second person that called. Hi, this is Grace. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. What's your prayer request? Uh, my prayer request is still the same thing, just where the Lord to show me what he's going to do in the time of waiting concerning my marriage. And that nation, pretty much. Okay. Let's lift up Sister Grace in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, right now, we just ask that you give her fresh anointing, Father God. In the name of Jesus, touch her from the top of her head to the sole crown of her feet, God. We ask that light be her portion, that you just break off anything in her of stagnation, God. We just come against the spirit of hopelessness. We come against fear. Uh, we just come against the spirit of feeling bound or stagnant. We just break that off for her right now. We speak life. We speak movement. Uh, Sister Grace, even if you may have to get out and physically move your body or uh, physically go out and do different things, do different places, maybe try different places where you can go eat or pick up a bite to eat or maybe go out, you know, in the nature or to the park or just even go outside and do something just to get it moving in the physical realm. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for giving her focus. Uh, downloading to her, showing her what she needs to do um, in her time of waiting for her husband, Father God. We just thank you for leading her to where she will need to be um, in her word. We just thank you for leading her, for uh, telling her what she needs to be decreeing and declaring in this season and for showing her openly and clearly, God, the visions and the dreams and different things that she needs to see concerning this season of her life and especially with her marriage. God, we ask that you have your way with her marriage, God, and just begin to touch her afresh as she'll begin to birth birth what she needs to birth out in jesus name we give you glory honor and praise lord amen 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 thank you amen thank you you're welcome woman of god and that third person that called um that you just called in uh what's your prayer request good morning this is Dee. hi Dee. good morning i miss you how you doing this morning oh, I miss you too. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, well, Lord, we just ask that you bless Dee Dee, Father God. Bless her and bless her indeed, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, guys, and God bless you, woman of God. So, um, he told me, so we read our Psalms 90 for us to um, open the scripture. Um, I was telling um, you guys on the... Um, on the John series that we just did, well, um, I'll tell you guys on the prayer line too. The word that he gave me for today was create. Uh, God said that this is a new beginning. He's been doing this for the last couple of days. Uh, God said this is a new beginning today. And I'm going to give you guys uh, what I put on my Instagram. Not word for word, but just summing it up. It says, no more excuses. This month has given you a brand new day, an opportunity to do what you know you need to do. Amen. Get to it. I know you can do it. So the Lord had me to say on Instagram, today is a new beginning, right? Don't look at yesterday. Don't look at an hour ago. Don't look at the past. Don't look at last year. Don't look at six months ago. Don't look at three weeks ago. Focus on today. Like don't focus on the frustrations or the failures. Focus on today. Focus on the gift of today. Because many times the enemy will try to get us so wrapped in what happened or what didn't happen or man, I should have did this, or why did I do this, or I shouldn't have done that, and he will take away the gift of today. It's just like someone that has a birthday party, and this birthday party is honoring them. They have all the gifts that people are bringing them. People are taking time out of their life to bring them a gift or come celebrate with them or support them and whatever means they can, and this person is just soaking on, oh, the gifts they didn't get, or they're soaking on, well, who's not here? And they're not grateful for the gifts that are there. They're not grateful for the people that are there. You know, they're thinking about, oh, well, it was like this last year at my last birthday party, and it's taken away from the moment of the now, right? It's taken away from their birthday party and their celebration of the now. Who is there in their season of the now? Who is bringing them a gift? The fact that they even can celebrate a lot, another birthday. How many people last year were planning for this year for their birthday, and they didn't even wake up to see it? How many people were planning yesterday and they didn't wake up uh, this morning to see or they did wake up this morning and they didn't get to see this moment right now so God is saying while we have time we need to work today is a new beginning right today is a new beginning he also gave me uh just do it like I always tell you guys the hardest thing about starting something is simply starting you want to know why because a lot of times in our mind we psych ourselves out or we allow the enemy to lie to us or we just make excuses, well, God, I don't have this support, or God, I don't have this money, or God, look at my bank account, or God, look at my credit, or God, look at my situation, or God, I don't have this, or I don't have that, or God, look at what I'm going through, or God, I'm such a wreck, I'm such a mess, or God, look at the things that happened in my past, or God, i never done this before, and all these excuses, and God is like, no more excuses. I just want you to do it. I just want you to trust me. Because if I was with you during your, your good times, your accomplishments, your prideful times, your I mean, your proud moments, so to speak, and your failures, I'm going to be with you through this. And you see, you still survive all of that, the good and the bad. So I just need you to just do it. Right? That's what he's saying for some of us on here. Just do it, including me. And then the word that he gave me uh, was create. It was create. And it uh, create is a verb. This is from Google. It says to bring something into existence. Uh, for example, he created a 30 acre lake and the synonyms for create because this word is for someone and uh, us coming on this line and uh, you guys listen to this on a replay or whatever um, it's going to create and burst something inside of you. Even if you were already creating and doing it, it's going to take it to another level. Even for me personally, I I've been seeing this. Right. So the synonyms for create is produce, uh, generate, bring into being, to make, to fabricate, to fashion, to build, to construct. God needs us to create. It could be uh, to create another confession, uh, literally create what the gifts and talents he has put ministries and gifts and talents and different dreams and goals and hopes inside of all of us. We may need to work more towards that or, OK, if we were already doing that. He may give us another level or another um, perspective or another angle to look at it, to take what we're already doing to the next level. Right. So create again is to cause something to happen as a result of one's actions. Right. And the synonyms could be to bring about, to give, rise to, to lead to, to result in, to cause, to breed, to generate, to engender, to produce, to make for, promote, foster, sow the seeds of, to contribute to, etc., etc. So if that's the word is for you, you know, just focus on creating. This is a brand new day. Today is your brand new beginning. And God just needs you to do it. Amen. So um, that's that word for that. And um, I'm just going to read all uh, these scriptures that the Lord told me. And uh, when I prayed, I said, God, what is the word for today? He gave me Psalms 94. He gave me that. 
I shared a little bit of that on the um, John series. I wasn't able to read it all because we're doing a live. And um, also, um, he's telling me to read about carrying our cross. There's someone on here listening to this word where it feels like your, your cross is unbearable. And it feels like your cross is too much. And if that word is for you, I want you guys to go back and listen to the John series that we did today. That word will encourage you because we were talking about different examples and different downloads. But one of them was, you know, if, if you're working and you're working, you know, whether you get paid weekly or bi-weekly or uh, once a month or every day or however you get paid, depending on the, corporate, the corporation or company you're with, you know, you may not get paid when you put in the labor. But that doesn't mean that you stop working because you know your payout, your payday is coming. You know you're going to get paid. So there are going to be some nights where you go home and you're tired and your feet hurting. You haven't seen the, the your paycheck, but you know your payday is coming. And the more time that you put in, that you work your hours, whether it's part-time, you know, 30 or less or so, or 40 or more full-time, the more that you put in, the more you're going to get on your check, right? And the less work that you do, the less you're going to get on your check. But nevertheless, you still have a check coming. And then there are some people that may do time and a half or overtime. So that's going to be a bonus. So there are some of you that feel like the cross that you're carrying is too much. And God is like, even though you haven't received the manifestation yet, even though you haven't seen the uh, breakthrough promise yet, just know that your bonus, your payout, your check, your time is coming. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. There were a lot of other downloads on it. You guys can go uh, listen to the John, the, the last one we just did today, and that'll be a blessing to you. But I just want to read this uh, before we close out. Um, carrying your cross. I don't know who that word is for, but um, that's that's for somebody. And uh, we're going to read uh, Matthew 16, 24 through 26. If that is for you, you guys can take notes so you can reflect over in your private time. Uh, Matthew 16, 24 through 26 says, take up your cross and follow Jesus. And before we read this, you know, the Lord, um, he even needed help carrying his cross, right? Uh, there was a man coming from work. I forgot his name. I think it started with a J or something. Um I think it's Joseph. I could be wrong. Not his dad. It was another man. The man was working and they said, you, you carry, you help him carry it. And he helped our Lord carry his cross. So God is going to always send people along your way to bless you with uh, the help and encouragement and the strength and the word that you need to help uh, to carry your cross. He's always going to put a friend in your path or someone that's going to um, pour into you or someone that's going to be positive and good for you in your life, a good blessing, a good seed in your life to, to help you along your, your path and your journey, right? He, he does it for me. He does it for you. He does it for all of his children. He always sends someone in our life to help us to carry this cross. This cross is not easy, right? So uh, Matthew 16, 24 through 26, uh, if you have your Bibles, you guys can go there with me and we can read it together. So 24 says, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 25, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Amen. So Jesus is saying, you may be feeling like you're going through an unbearable situation. This is what I'm getting out of it. But uh, just keep carrying your cross. Keep, just keep staying on the righteous path. Just keep staying on the good path. Don't go out and do what they're doing. Don't succumb to what they're doing. Don't give in to the temptation. Don't take the shortcuts. Jesus is saying, I'm going to honor you as you keep taking up your cross and following me. And if that word specifically was for you, uh, he told me to read Matthew 11, 28 through 30, because this is a promise of the Lord for you on today and in this season. Amen. To give you strength. It says, um, Matthew 11, 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that Matthew 11, 28 through 30 is for someone. Uh, let's go to the next one. Bear with me just a moment. I'm going to read um, a few of them. I just typed in, um, what does the Bible say about carrying your cross? This is coming from openbibleinfo.com. If you guys want this link, I'll send it to you. Just email me. I'm just going to read a few verses, um, and whatever applies to you applies. I'm just going to read them. Um, I don't know who it's going to be for what, but I'm just going to read some of what the Bible says about carrying the cross. 17 Bible verses. So Hebrews 11 
um, going down, not all the way down, but some verses says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, or the evidence of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Excuse me. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God, and then it continues on. Uh, the next one is Philippians 2, 6 through 11. It says, uh, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God or count himself equal with God, a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, right? He was humble, right? Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So some of you are going through some uh, humbling times. You're going through some trying times, some pressing times. You don't understand this season. You look back over your life and you're like, God, but how did I end up here? Why am I going through this? Okay, you may have explained to me, God, why I'm going through this, but why do I have to go through all this to get it? And just like Jesus had to humble himself, uh, he was in the form of God. He humbled himself to take the form of a servant. And he, you know, was in human form. He humbled himself and he was obedient. So God is blessing you as you're humbled. God is blessing you as you're staying under his hand and trusting him to exalt you and provide for you. God is blessing you as you're obedient to do what you're doing, right? So it says, uh, even death on the cross for Jesus. So therefore, God has highly exalted him. Now, when you're exalted, you're already going higher. But God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth amen so as you're humbled and as you're um obedient to do what the Lord is telling you to do even though it's pressing and it doesn't always feel good God is going to highly exalt you God is going to bless you God is going to favor you God is going to take you higher you're going to get more than some people uh you know will get because you're doing more you're going through more you're sowing the seeds and working your field and working your garden now. So God will be able to do it. And there are going to be some people that you probably know that look like they're shining and they're winning and they're looking down on you. But when the tables turn, the Lord is going to exalt you and rise you up. And the tables are going to turn and they're going to have to go through their pruning season. Because see, now you're going through your pruning season. And they don't want to be obedient and bow the knee. This, is, this word is for somebody specifically on here. I don't know who, but there's someone looking at you and they're mocking you and they're laughing at you and they feel like they're better than you. And they feel like, um, you know, what you're doing doesn't mean as much. And they feel like because you're not doing what they're doing, what you're doing doesn't count. Right. It's kind of like a mocking spirit. And, you know, you're going through what you got to do. You're being pruned in process now. So when God elevates you and lifts you up, there will be a season where they have to go through what they have to go through right to um you know to get to their season then the tables are going to turn you know there's this saying from the uh the older people they say you know you got to be careful who you like how you treat people because the same people that you see um going up it's the same people that you'll see coming down right like they say like whatever you throw up in the air is going to come back down what goes up must come down amen so just be uh found faithful in your season uh god is not going to Okay, so, okay, this is an example for someone. Two things. So, when you get to heaven, he's not going to ask you, and I've been telling you guys this the last couple of videos, he's not going to ask you, well, why didn't you do what they asked you to do? Why didn't you, you know, be who they wanted you to be? He's going to say, what did you do with what I told you to do? Were you the person that I created you to be? What did you do with what I gave you? Right? And there's some of you, i just seen this on uh, this analogy, this example, and I guess he wants us to stop with the, uh, the reading. And I, I just give you this example. But if you guys um, want this link, I'll send it to you because there's like 17 verses on it. But he told me to stop reading and just give you guys this example. But there's someone on here, like you may be, the Lord has promised you the penthouse, right? He's promised you the high place. But you're being faithful. Okay, so this is a two-part example. So whatever is for you, I know this is specifically for a person because he's showing it to me. So you're in a hotel. The Lord has promised you the the um the penthouse, not just a regular suite on one of the floors. He has promised you the top, the best, top notch, the penthouse. 
but you're still in the lobby, right? Then you move from the lobby place, the waiting place, to getting a room, right? Getting a room. Then you may go to our room one or two or, 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 or floor one or two or three or whatever. Then he may take you to 20. But God is like, I promise you the penthouse. So if God can move you from the lobby to, to even get in a room at this particular hotel, not a real hotel. I hope you guys are following what I'm saying. Then taking you up levels and levels, as he see that you're faithful with that level, he's going to bless you with more. See, God cannot just take you from the lobby to the penthouse because you may not know how to act. You may be arrogant and feel like you're better than people because you haven't been processed. You haven't been pruned. You may feel like, oh, it wasn't even you, God, who did it for me. You may forget God. Like it says in the Bible, um, in the Old Testament, I believe it's like Leviticus or Deuteronomy, something like that. I think it's Deuteronomy. When the Lord takes you to your good land, don't forget that it was him who humbled you and gave you the power to get wealth. Don't feel like it's you. Don't forget the Lord your God. And there are some people that the Lord cannot bless you and elevate you because you still have to be pruned. You still have to be processed. He still have to get certain things out of you. So you can remember that it's him. So when he does give it to you, so when he does give you the blessing, he don't lose you to the blessing. Right? The Lord don't want to lose you to the blessing. The Lord don't want you to bless the blessing more than you bless the blesser. So he can't just take all of us from the lobby to the penthouse. We don't know how to act. We have to we have to prove our faithfulness with room one. How do how do we act in this room? How how do we treat people in this in this on this level? Room two, room three, room four, going up the levels, maybe uh, 20. Then then the penthouse, it, it goes up and up and up and up and up, amen? So there's levels to it and there's a process. So I hope that that word bless someone um, and the Lord is having me to close. Now we're going to close out. But I am going to open the line um, for whoever this is for. If you guys want to share any feedback or say anything, I'm going to open it up before we close out. And before we get off here, there's another example he showed me. I forgot to tell you guys this. Going back to the hotel, the two-part example. Um, let's say that God told you you're going to be the owner of that hotel. Again, it doesn't have to be a physical hotel. Um, it could be if it's for you. But this is like just a whatever your promise is, the Lord showed it to you. But you're going through your season. So let's say you start off as a janitor or a cleaning person. You know, a lot of times people don't want to do the hard work or the, the hard things. Or they don't want to do the nasty or they don't want to get their hands dirty. But then God elevates you from a cleaning person to maybe a cook. Or maybe from a cook to something else. And then eventually you end up running that hotel. You, you are the owner of that hotel. Then you go maybe go from assistant or working at behind the desk. And then you own the hotel. And then you branch out and you own several chains at a hotel. But it's levels. Because God saw that you were faithful with the cleaning position and the cook and being uh, the receptionist behind the desk. Uh, booking the people in their room, checking them in and out, answering the phone, doing things that people, some people may look down on, which I'm not saying people look down on now. I'm just saying like in your season, some people may be looking down on you. I know in my season, people, look, a lot of people look down on me, but I don't let it bother me because I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. And I know that my promises is on the way, right? Some of it are many ready manifested and some of it hasn't. And I already know the end result that the Lord have shown me, right? The bigger picture, right? So that word is for somebody just be faithful in your lane and watch God increase and enlarge and promote you and bless you. But um, no one opened up, so I just pray that this uh, was this word was a blessing to you guys. I want to thank you guys for um, watching this and calling in. I love you guys. Uh, you guys can join me back on here tomorrow, Lord's Will, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I pray that you all have a great day. God bless.